Dear car manufacturers, please stop. This isn't how nameplates and heritage work. I don't care how many journalists or YouTubers you've paid to pretend to like the car. I know they're only saying that because, herder, maybe if we say it enough, people will accept it. That's not how the world works, and that's not how the world should ever work. Mustangs and Eclipses shouldn't be SUVs in the same vein that when you go buy a copy of Street Fighter, you aren't expecting it to be a freaking cooking game, you want it to be a fighting game because that's the legacy you supported. Or if you were to buy a can of Mountain Dew, you don't want to suddenly open up and realize, oh, it's not soda anymore, it's now spaghetti and meatballs. A common counter-argument I see right now is, well, things progress over time, and thus it's gonna change its identity, so you need to get over it, you hater. Look, I agree that change is inevitable. I'm not against moving towards the future. If you want to make an electric Mustang, go for it. You want to make an electric SUV, go for it. But when you want to make an electric SUV and then name it a Mustang? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There's a logical progression to this identity change that people are talking about. Let's take something like the Corvette. It took eight generations for that car to finally become mid-engine. Despite Zora, one of the grandfathers of design for that car, wanting it to be mid-engine near its initial release. Even though it's mid-engine now, a lot still carried over. It's still a high-performance V8 rear-wheel drive coupe. They're going to move into the future and eventually give us a flat plane and maybe even a hybrid and maybe even someday an electric Corvette. But when that happens, I'm going to be prepared for it and I'm going to respect them because they respected us consumers and showed respect to its heritage as they easily transitioned it in a logical fashion. Meanwhile, the Mustang was never an SUV, much less a sedan, so without an ease of transition, it just feels like a massive insult to their consumer base. I don't care if the regular Mustang is still for sale, tacking the name onto a product that doesn't deserve it that feels cheap and ingenuine. By doing so, it affects the original Mustang's image and legacy because it makes the Mustang nameplate feel like some dollar store hooker who's a total sellout. As a former Mustang owner, and for all the current Mustang owners, this feels awful. We spent, before someone just says, oh, you guys are just stupid wannabe haters, look, we spent several thousands, that's not a joke, we spent several freaking thousands of dollars buying Mustangs, supporting the brands, and the heritage that they come with, the history behind it. And I don't want Karen, who drives her kids to soccer practice, to start calling her SUV a Mustang and smile smugly like she's now cool enough to be part of the club, because she's not. It's not a Mustang. That's not the Mustang identity that me and several people who've spent several thousands of dollars to buy into. That's not what we wanted. That's not the identity that we're going with. It's not mindless complaining. This is actual consumers who've actually given money for a product. Again, back to the Mountain Dew example. You don't spend money on a can of Mountain Dew and have spaghetti and meatballs show up. That's going to disappoint you. This Mach-E is less deserving of the Mustang moniker than Survive is of the Metal Gear Solid moniker. Again, let's take a look at what a real company that understands its audience and respects the heritage behind the products would respond. The executive chief engineer of the Corvette was asked on multiple occasions if it was possible to make a Corvette a SUV. This was his response. That question all the time. Why don't you do a Corvette SUV? I know. Porsche does it. Why don't you do it? I, no, I don't. The Corvette has been successful, I think, because we've stuck to our knit. You know, we, yeah, we yeah. keep focused on what we do, and people say, oh, we've deviated from what we do. It's still two passenger car, V8 powered, right. it's the driving experience. Someone make sure this man stays in charge of Corvettes until the day he dies, because as long as he's the chief engineer, I can sleep soundly at night knowing he'll never sell out and make the Corvette a freaking SUV nameplate. You can even hear him mention how they don't want to betray their customers, how heritage is important to them, how giving customers a product they actually expect is a good thing. Even though the C8 ultimately is mid-engine and a departure from the you know front-engine infrastructure, at its core, it's still acceptable as a Corvette. It's still V8, it's still rear-wheel drive, whatever, I'm fine with it. Hell, even the new Supra with its BMW DNA, oh, I used to complain about that, but I'm so sorry I ever did because at least it's still an inline-six, two-door, rear-wheel drive sports car. Toyota at least put some thought into understanding the vehicle's previous generations and the heritage that came with it, and then they're like, okay, we're going to give it the nameplate Supra. Is it the best application of Supra? 
Probably not, but you know what? An actual effort was made and maybe the next generation will be a built-in-house example. And if we support this current generation enough, they might move in that direction. I can actually have faith. I can actually tell people to go out and buy Supers with good faith, knowing that Toyota has actually delivered once, they're likely to deliver again. But there's, there's no effort here. There's no good faith with Ford. Who's to say that the Mustang isn't just, just going to disappear and then it'll just all be SUVs? I don't care if the Mach-E has a Mustang grill that doesn't make it a Mustang. Again, let's look at Chevy. The Chevy Blazer RS and Chevy Traverse RS both have Camaro grills, but get this, super mind-blowing, they aren't called Camaros. I am not super big into Chevy versus Ford because I own both cars, but... I'm starting to lean towards Chevy because it looks like they at least understand the logic of retaining the original name. Sharing grills within a company, that's normal. Lexus does it, BMW does it, Chevy does it. And if Ford honestly wants to put a Mustang grill on every single car in their lineup, because I know the Taurus already has one too, honestly, I'm okay with that. I dig that, all right? You can, you can keep the Mustang grill in the Mach-E. That's fine. Just don't call it a Mustang. If you want a Ford SUV, just go buy an Expedition or Escape or Explore or something else in, within the selection. Why do you have to take a beloved sports car and turn it into an SUV? There are so many other SUVs, and I mean so many other when I say that, because they're, they're all over the place in America now. Just make a Mach-E Explorer, or better yet, just, just call it Mach-E. That's fine. Just drop the Mustang moniker. This car only exists as a Mustang because some weirdos want to have the nameplate and cool factor of the Mustang. But they completely fail to realize that the cool factor from the Mustang is not the nameplate alone. The nameplate has that worth because of the heritage behind it. You can't just tack the Mustang nameplate and then BAM, it's now cool. Like I said, Karen driving a soccer practice, I'm sorry that's not a Mustang, I don't give a crap. You've made it less cool if anything because now it starts to make the Mustang just feel cheap. You know, my respect for it's going to go down and so will many other people's. In fact, take a look at these dislikes. Ford, if you have any single brain, like an ounce of sense in you guys, guy, people hate this. Consumers hate this. This, this isn't just a oh, herder, haters reaction. This is, you're literally betraying people at this point. At its core, it was stylish, sexy, and it oozed youth and freedom image. It's like an actual wild Mustang. It's untamed. It's out there. Initially, it was targeted at single independent women who wanted a nice sporty looking car. And even though it started off being targeted at women, I don't give a crap because the car is beautiful, it is badass, and it's transcended to the point where people of all genders, all walks of life, and all over the world came to love the Mustang moniker. But it came with the entry point of, hey, this isn't a car for someone with massive responsibilities and has a huge family and needs to constantly fill it up with groceries. It's a youthful sports car. Image is very important to a brand, very important to an identity, especially an identity that has been around for more than 50 years. When you see the beautiful Mustang pony emblazoned onto a car passing down the street, it should be the gorgeous two-door coupe we all know and love, not someone headed to daycare. Think about this. When you introduce yourself in an interview or to people that you just met, in fact, when you wake up every morning, when you write every single paper, what is on it? It's your name. And with that name comes an identity. And even the name that follows after your name, your surname, is shared with family, shared with a commitment, a bond that was built over several generations. We as humans rely on names for identification purposes. It makes things easier to understand, but it also gives us the sense of belonging to a community. When I say words like, hey, we're all car guys, car guys have has a name it has an identity we aren't going to suddenly go out tomorrow and be like oh let's all just go love boats no that's what boat guys do imagine how confusing it, it's going to be to market this car to people if i go up to non-car people right now and talk about the ford mustang mach e this that's going to be the car they're going to picture and the worst part is that may be the actual target audience who would have bought the car had you named it something else but you're going to miss out on it because you couldn't name it right and for people who currently own Mustangs, if I told them, hey, have you seen the new Mustang Mach-E? They're probably going to think, oh, okay, it's probably a cool electric Mustang. They're going to go check it out and their face is just going to sink. They're going to drop as they realize that it's not the Mustang they knew and love. They're just going to go buy a Tesla instead. In fact, Ford designed this car to compete with Tesla, but they already missed the catchy name of it. Mach-E is so catchy. It's such a beautiful, simple name. Why would you tack Mustang onto it? That's just extra syllables for no reason. 
Like I said, we like keeping names simple and we like associating names with certain identities because that's what makes it easy for us humans to understand. You don't suddenly wake up next morning and start introducing yourself with an entirely different name to all your coworkers. That's going to confuse them. It's going to piss them off. And they're going to say, why did you change your name? What comes with that new identity? What do you benefit from it? Or imagine if you started taking someone else's name. That's probably more comparable analogy to this case. Imagine if you went to work tomorrow and started using one of your coworkers' name and start insisting they call you by that coworker. You are not that person. You don't deserve to have their name. You haven't been through experiences that they have. And it's the same with the Mustang. That SUV has not had the love, the heritage, the thousands of dollars that all of us Mustang owners have poured into supporting the Mustang brand. We do have the right to be mad at this. This is ridiculous. You made no one happy. Current owners were upset. And future owners, they're just going to be confused. They're going to look at it and be like, wait, that's a Mustang? I don't get it. I mean, Ford, I know you bigwig executives love money. So do you remember what happened to the Mitsubishi Eclipse? Beautiful sports car, right? And then someone woke up someday and said, let's turn this into a garbage crossover. And guess what happened? Garbage sales and garbage profit margins and horrible, horrible reviews. People were hard on this car and people are hard on this Mach-E right now, all because of the name. They can't even look past the name. For all I know, the Eclipse might actually be a decent SUV, but it doesn't matter. Why was it called Eclipse? Why is this called a Mustang? Like I mentioned earlier, I, I've never problem with the way it looks. I get it. It's already been made. The prototype is already here. A lot of R&D has been spent on it. In the same way I think Ford is selfish to call it a Mustang, I also think it's selfish for me to wish this car out of existence. I know a lot of engineers, a lot of designers, a lot of people who are paid good money, worked several hours, went into designing this car, and I know they can't just erase it out of existence. They do need to make a profit, and those guys do need to put food on the table. So because of that, I'm okay with this car still existing. Just please drop the Mustang moniker. And I think the chance of this happening is extremely low. I'm not a very popular YouTuber. There's no way this is going to find its way to trending. And that's the saddening part. You know, if Ford was as cool as Paramount and actually listened to customers and, hey, hey you know, we're wrong. We ruined an image. We're going to change it. All right. Like Paramount, for example, what they did with Sonic, they completely ruined his image. They completely destroyed the heritage, the legacy tied with it. And then they listened to their fans. They actually took a step back and said, hey, let's look at what made Sonic so lovable and let's make something faithful. And gave the fans what they wanted. And in turn, they they, went, they won over my money. I'm going to go watch that movie. I don't even like Sonic that much. But because that they actually showed that they listened to people, holy crap, I'm going to support a company like that. And a good company, whether it's for cars, movies, music, or whatever industry that they're part of, you need to remember what makes you successful in the first place. Your freaking consumers. I get that consumers aren't always right. But in this instance, I think we are. It's ridiculous to call this a Mustang. Ford, we've got to draw the line somewhere. When can I expect a Mustang truck, a Mustang sedan, or heck, even a Mustang bicycle? At this point, it's already a sellout. You better reverse it before release. If you don't, who's to know how the slippery slope goes? Anyways, those are my thoughts on this whole debacle. Not just with Ford, but also with Mitsubishi and their clips, and many other companies that are just starting to just throw nameplates and SUVify everything and not understanding how important names are. Other than that, thanks for watching, and make sure that when you go to work tomorrow, you don't call yourself by one of your coworkers' name. You go by your name. And Ford, make sure that if you watch this video, you call the Ford Mustang a Mustang, and you call this SUV Mach-E. Bladed Angel, out.